Hello, beasties, and welcome to another ep brilliant episode of Real to Real. I'm Dylan, and I'm one half of the host for today. And I'm the other half, Chris. Today we have the joyous opportunity to review Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. I gotta say, I was really not looking forward to seeing this movie, especially after loathing the first film so much. Mm, can't argue with you there. Uh, but will our op opinions differ from the sequel? Let's take a look at the trailer. Huzzah and such. Five years ago, I thought I lost you forever. There is no curse that could ever tear me away from you. Will you marry me? Yes! Vicious! Compelling stuff. Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, is the sequel to 24, the 2014 Disney film Maleficent, and this time it's a look into Aurora, Sleeping Beauty's life after her curse. Aurora is now queen of the Moors, and every queen needs to love a king. So when Prince Philip proposes, Aurora obviously says yes. Kind of weird since his true love's first kiss didn't wake her up in the first one, but hey, it's Disney. Things will probably work out. With the two engaged and supposed to be wed, the prince's father decides to have a dinner with Aurora and her godmother, Maleficent. This leads to an interesting turn of events where the king falls under the Sleeping Beauty's curse, and Maleficent ends up at an island full of her own kind. The story was better than the first one, I guess, but honestly, it was kind of a weird sequel, with no real reason for being other than there must have been a strong demand from the fans. With Angelina Jolie and Ella Fanning both returning to appraise their roles, I felt as though uh, the relationship between the characters was a bit cheesy. Some of the more wholesome moments kind of make me sick, but hey, all four people in the theater seemed to enjoy it. Yeah, it was rather cringy at moments, but uh, at least the epic final showdown kept me awake after my mid-movie nap. Uh, it's kind of sad when your favorite character is a crow that got turned into a man. Maleficent is still crabby. Aurora is still naive. I'm really glad these characters grew over the years. Maybe next time Disney can stay home and not try to rewrite a story that already had a sound ending. But if we've learned anything from Star Wars, chances are we'll find disappointment time and time again. Bam, shots fired. Well, before we go any further into this visually stunning yet rather pointless sequel, let's take a look at another trailer from the film. I mean, um, <laughs> um, you know, from the first film, we were introduced to Aurora and, um, you know, obviously much younger, but her kindness um, has always been kind of the center. And it, it's she is, you know, that part in, in accepting and embracing of all. Um, and that obviously that definitely carries to to this film. Um, but she's, you know, she's grown now, um, and she has responsibilities of her own, and she's gaining her independence as a young woman. And um, but she also is very kind of soft, and she embraces her femininity. And we really wanted to show that in the second film. That a lot of times in sequels they try to make the princesses, um, you know, fight and have armor, and like, oh, let's just twist it on. It's like they think that's really twisting it on its head to show the. Then she's a strong woman, and and I think with that question, you know, all three of us, we show our strength in... My mistake, thought we had a clip, but it was a little interview. Anyways, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil is a sequel to 2014's Maleficent, which itself was a retelling of Disney's 1959 animated musical fantasy classic, Sleeping Beauty. And even that was based on a fairy tale that can be traced all the way back to the 1340s. Wow, Disney sure knows how to milk every dime they can out of a story, huh? Angelina Jolie returns to play the titular Maleficent, and the character is her usual pessimistic self at the start of the film. You think that she would have grown since the first movie, but that's not really the case. She does, however, do a lot more growing this time around. With her adopted daughter Aurora, played once again by Elle Fanning, getting engaged at the start of the movie, they both get an invitation to the castle of the King and Queen of Ulsted. The kingdom and everyone in it has an over-exaggerated fear of Maleficent, including the king, but even more so the queen. You just can't get along with those in-laws. Uh, they are just the worst. Aurora does have a lot more to do in the film this time than sleep. She is a strong leader and always tries to stand up for what is right. Aurora even stands up to Maleficent when she thinks some evil doings were going on at the hands of her adoptive mother. It is revealed early on that the true villain is Queen Ingrith, played by Michelle Pfeiffer. She does a great job at making you hate her as if she was your own mother-in-law. 
She puts up a great fight against Maleficent, but in the end is no match and goats what she has coming to her. There isn't much to be said about the other characters, really. Uh, the king sleeps most of the movie. Prince Philip is just kind of there for the story. The only other character briefly worth mentioning is Connell, who is played by Chituel Ejiofor, who saves Molesta and then tries to um, take her down a peaceful path before he suffers an untimely fate. With all that out of the way, let's take a look at a commercial from HTC. Advertisement. Three, two, one. With what's happening today with smartphones, everybody has the ability to shoot video. But not everybody has the ability to edit that video and communicate a thought and idea in a professional way with high production value. That's where we come in. This particular program allows a student to do single cam productions, multi-cam productions, short films, corporate promos, things like that. So there's a lot of different things that a student can learn in the video production area. What I love here is the practical work that I can learn. It's like a non-pressure environment, and I like that about it. All those things that you're not going to learn unless you do it. You can read about it in a book, but that's not going to help you when you're on set. The original Maleficent had a budget of $180 million and grossed around $750 million, giving reason for a sequel, I guess. This time around, Disney threw $185 million for the film's budget and already returned around $300 million in its opening week. More money than I'll ever see in a lifetime, and it's still not enough because this will be Disney's 10th movie to be released this year. And knowing Disney, we're sure to see a few more in the next few months. Well, apparently the title Mistress of Evil was used for some foreign language versions of the first Maleficent, giving the alternative title for the movie Maleficent 2 a reason to exist. Though it seems a little less creative, maybe it'll help avoid any confusion, and sounds a little less than, like a horror movie. One interesting thing I did see throughout the movie was her use of green magic. In the first movie, whenever she was using green magic, that was the color she was using whenever she was doing an evil deed. And throughout the second movie, almost all of her magic was green, maybe indicating that she's finally lost it. Oh, she's definitely lost it. Her aggressive nature in the film and her calls for war really sell it. Regardless of what the color of her magic is, she's clearly woken up on the wrong side of the bed. I think I'd be upset too if my adopted daughter totally bailed on me for some rich kid. Now before we give you our very thoughtful scores of this movie, let's take a look at one more clip from the film. Mistress! What? I have a little bit of news. Well, on with it. This doesn't have any real consequence, and it's certainly no reason to overreact. It's just that Prince Philip has, um... Disappeared. No. No, Philip has... Yellow fever? No, wait. Leprosy. No, mistress. Prince Philip has asked Aurora if she'll become his... Don't. Ruin my morning. Mm, well, it's coming time where we're going to give you our scores for the movie because obviously we are the most credible source for movie reviews since the one guy and the other guy. How about you get this party started? I'd be thrilled to, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give this movie a three out of five reels. I remember seeing the first movie in the theater five years ago and not enjoying it at all. The sequel, however, was somewhat surprisingly enjoyable. The beginning was able to hook me in with a pretty cool opening sequence that was filled with some great shots. And the ending war scene was awesome. The shots of the massive courtyard with all the fighting going on was really impressive. Most of the CGI shots were done really well. However, there were some creatures and some shots that just felt out of place and looked odd. Oddly enough, I think I'm going to have to agree with you. I'm also going to give this movie a 3 out of 5 reels. I know, I know, we're supposed to disagree, right? But honestly, it's the most accurate rating for this film. Though I felt the sequel was a heartless cash grab with no real reason for being, it surpassed the original in many ways. I feel the first one was too attached to the original story, restricting what they could do with the characters and how they progressed the story. But the second one was free to do, well, whatever it wanted. On top of that, the visuals were amazing, and though I've been really giving Disney a hard time, they really know how to make a breathtaking scene. 
can't disagree with you there. Overall, this was a film worth seeing, especially if you enjoyed the first one for some reason. <laughs> I probably wouldn't uh, see it again, but it was surprisingly a fun film to watch. I agree. It was a good time. And while it's not my usual film of choice, I will say it's worth giving a shot, especially for those that might have younger children. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks for watching. Join us next week where we or two other people will be reviewing <laughs> Terminator Dark Fate. I'm Dylan. Chris, why don't you send us off? Well, you just heard my name, so I guess I'll see you later. <laughs>